Hello there my friends, my name is RiskFish and today I'm bringing you a video on Warhammer 2 Total War. Recently CA revealed that the Wood Elves would be in the next DLC, much to the surprise of the community. That said, it now leaves a very interesting question. Who will the Wood Elves be fighting? This video is designed to examine the evidence and find the answer. Point 1. Old World Reworks In the Wood Elf announcement it states that there will be Old World Reworks. Reworks of course being plural likely referring to the other race in the DLC, suggesting that it too is a old world race, making it unlikely to be the Skaven or the Dark Elves. Additionally, several of the other old world races have already received a rework in Warhammer 2. These include the Dwarves and Norska in the Resurgent update, the Vampire Counts in the II patch, the Empire in the Empire Undivided patch and the Greenskins in the Total War update. The Bretonians have also received a rework with their vows in the Doomsayer update. The only races that don't fit into this criteria are the Warriors of Chaos and the Beastmen, making them the races most in need of a rework. Point 2 The Warhammer 2 Standard CAS stated that they want to bring all races up to the same standard. For the DLC races, this appears to be four lords based on the Vampire Coast and Tomb Kings DLCs. This idea has further gained momentum recently with the Bretonians also getting a fourth lord in the Potion of Speed update, and the Wood Elves confirmed to be receiving two lords in the next update, bringing them up to four as well. There is however one slot available in the DLC for another race. Nusker requires two more lords to bring up to four meaning it can't hit the standard in this DLC if it is included. But, both the Warriors of Chaos and Beastmen only require one Lord each to bring them up to the Four Lord standard, adding credibility to their inclusion. In regards to the core races, all Warhammer 2 races have already received two DLCs, with the Skaven and Dark Elves only needing a free LC Lord each to reach the core race standard. The Empire and the Greenskins have also received two DLC packs and are playable on the Vortex. This potentially leaves the Dwarves and the Vampire accounts, however not only have they both received the Warhammer 2 rework, but have also great potential as a pre-order for Warhammer 3, as both Neferata and Foric Ironbrow are located at the edge of the Darklands, which is in the current Mortal Empires map, and probably also in the Warhammer 3 map as well on the western side. Point 3. Whispers of Chaos on the Horizon CA hid the clue for the Warden and the Punch in the Shadow and the Blade trailer, and it seems they have done something similar here. The notification for the Warden and the Punch said, Whispers of something on the horizon. There is something very significant here, because neither High Elves or Greenskins whisper. That is because this is a clever reference referring to Blacktooth, Chrome's shaman who received whispers from the Chaos Gods, which are infamous for whispering and corrupting the mortal races. This means that the complete statement is likely Whispers of Chaos on the Horizon, foreshadowing a Chaos aligned race in the next DLC. Point 4 Start Locations and Game Balance Both Lustra and the Southlands now have 10 Lords, and Nagaroth is just behind with 8. In a livestream, 2CA members discussed how they thought that Nagaroth needs more beasties, and if you look in the lore, Nagaroth is the area with the highest concentration of beastmen in the New World. The central and western side of Nagroth are also sparsely populated when it comes to legendary lords, so a new lord here would help spice up the area. The Wood Elves also have a connection of sorts to the Deadwood, so could potentially start in the area as well. Point 5. The Sword of Cain This is more logic than evidence, but only the Elven factions can draw the Sword of Cain from the Shrine of the Widowmaker, although all factions can use it once it has been drawn. The Dark Elves and the High Elves both have Lords that start very close to the Shrine, so it would make a lot of sense for the Wood Elves to be nearby to compete for it as well, since they are able to draw it. A Laurel is also nearby, offering a potential powerful ally to any Wood Elf player, so any Wood Elf faction in the Northwest would not be that isolated. Point 6. Skull in the Warden in the Paunch logo This is a bit more far-fetched, but there is a skull in the logo for the Warden in the Paunch. This skull has primarily been used in undead themed DLCs such as the Tomb Kings and the Vampire Coast, but it is also important to mention that skulls have a chaos connection, best demonstrated by the saying, skulls for the skull throne. However, we can also see in the Call of the Beastmen cinematic that there are beastmen impaling skulls on spears, so there is a potential reference there. Point 7. Centigore Milk Anyone 
CA also posted a statement saying Centigore milk anyone in Grom's Let's Play. While this is an ingredient in the campaign, CA tend to think a lot about what they say and the way it will be interpreted and it is very likely that this could in fact be a hint for the next DLC. It is also worth mentioning that CA seems to have a thing for mounts with Teclas and the Arcane Phoenix, even the joke about Nakai potentially riding a Dreadsaurian. But uh, let's not go into that before people get angry. So, a Centicle Lord like Gorus Warhoof would definitely appeal to them. Remember that War Matu has often chosen fast-mounted characters like Tic-Tac-Toe over Gorok because the meta of the game focuses on high movement and ranged warfare. Point 8. Rivalry The Beastmen and the Wood Elves are notorious rivals, and Morka and Aralop in particular have a strong rivalry, fighting in both the Forest of Arden in Northern Britonia and Aphalorin. It is also quite interesting that CA has touched upon this as well, as the main antagonist of the Realm of the Wood Elves DLC is Morka, and that means that a Beastman Lord comes as part of the Wood Elves DLC. So CA has definitely acknowledged this rivalry in-game previously. Point 9. Beastman Moons in the Files I recently watched a video from a YouTuber called Broken Load Order, who states that Manslib and Morslib, two of the Beastman Moons, are in Troy's data files. Remember that while Troy is a separate game, both Troy and Warhammer are made on the Warscape engine, so a crossover of files is possible. Also bear in mind that this could actually be a skybox for an end of campaign quest battle, as the moons are extremely thematic to the beastmen, and practically all of their lords. Point 10. Diplomacy Dialogue for Wood Elves, Beastmen and Chaos Again from Broken Load Order, according to his information there has been new dialogue added to these three races, and if that is the case then since the Wood Elves are confirmed to be the next DLC after receiving these updates, it makes a lot of sense that the Beastmen and the Warriors of Chaos are also on the cards, and these updates have been added in preparation for their inclusion. Point 11. The Savage Edition the Savage Edition of Warhammer Total War has just released which includes the Beastmen and Warriors of Chaos DLC. The question is why aren't the Wood Elves included and the answer is that they are receiving a ton of free content which requires their DLC. This huge amount of free content gives people an incentive to buy the Realm of the Wood Elves separately. If the Beastmen are the other DLC race though, not receiving anywhere near as much content can the value of the Call of the Beastmen be compared to the Realm of the Wood Elves, especially after the Wood Elves are getting all this free content if you own that DLC? I think this is why the Beastmen is being used to upsell the Warhammer Savage Edition instead of the Wood Elves one, which can sell on its own. Because while it has less value on its own, the Call of the Beastmen as a package can add an incentive to buy the main game. This sadly brings us to the end of the video. I think there is a lot of chaos based evidence and I realistically think it's going to be Goros, Warhoof and the Beastman riding in. That said with the mention of Morslib, I can dream that Moonclaw might be in, but uh, that's just my wishful thinking. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.